And Rail T-Track Master Faye Chin energizes the Amherst Railroad Hobby Show. World of N-Rail, welcome to Sunday at the show in Springfield, Massachusetts, 2023. We are here on day two of this massive show celebrating 50 years and I'm standing right here at the T-Track layout, displaying the T-Track sign, tabletop train layouts, as it well indicates, plus a website. For more information, go to nrail.org or t-track.org. <laughs> We're with the NRail channel on YouTube, and I'm standing right here with Faye Chen. And Faye, I heard a rumor that this is your layout. These are some of your modules that you brought into the show. And you've put yes. some animation built into this. Is yes. that right? Yes. Well, go ahead. And tell so, me what you built. Let me show you my, my coal-fired power plant, and I have a coal handling facility that serves as the uh, power plant. And so this is some of my animated features oh my goodness look at that oh that is so cool i'll i'll catch up with you john wow so that's a cool hand to did you do that with arduino or what that, that was prior to arduino Period. So tell us, what did you use to so construct this? At this, this? Point, it's just a servo motor. A servo motor. Yeah. So tell me more about this scene. What have you, you got the steam well, power plant. Go further down. What are we looking at right okay. now, Faye? So that's a typical urban scene where all the activity is centered around the movie theater. Uh, Emperor, of Emperor of the North. Emperor of the North is the, what's playing now. That's cool. And so I use the Arduino to control all the lights. Really? And it's all the versus the vehicles are also controlled by the Arduino. Right. I hand sorted all the LED lights, all the wires through the LED lights. So one Arduino, which is like a mini computer it, chip, is controlling how many features uh, on this module? It, it's, it's a, little microcontroller right that will uh, it depends on the size of your controller yeah you can have as small as five control five outputs and inputs okay or you can go up to 50 so up to 50 up to it depends on the size of your so five controller. to 50 different features can be controlled depending on the yeah. size of your controller that's correct that's, that's neat correct. So you got quite a bit of activity going on here. That's that's really cool. And you said you wrote an article about this in the NRAIL in newsletter? The new, NRAIL newsletter. What, do you remember what issue? I don't remember the issue. Okay. Right a couple years ago? We'll post it. There. Yes, we'll post it up in comments. Very good. All right. And, of course, you're right behind the T-Track sign. You know, I've been telling everybody we are here at the Amherst Model Railroad Show. And we've been doing this for about... Nine years now. Nine years. In track. And of course, this year of all years is 2023, 50 years since 1973, when n -Track first introduced the world to modular model railroading in N-Scale. That's correct. And it wasn't until 2000 that the late founder, Jim Fitzgerald, and his wife, Lee Monaco Fitzgerald, introduced T-Track to North America, having seen it in Japan. That's correct. That's correct. Have I left out any important details about that story? No, that's true. So <laughs> since 2000, T-Track has been building and growing. What's the most modules that have ever been assembled in a T-Track layout? We did the world's record in Kansas City when we had over 300 modules. 300 uh, yep. in Kansas and City. What year was that? Uh, that was in 2018. And, uh, and the layout was 70 feet by 50 feet layout 70 by 50 and, and we used tables and there were 100 tables for that show 100 tables yep, and it took 20 uh, it took uh, about an hour to go around the layout 
One hour one for hour one run. For one run. Wow. And then um, in the scale mile is 28 and a half miles. Okay. In scale miles. That is impressive. That, you know, we've been keeping those type of statistics about n track layouts and n track modules since the very beginning. Yep. And to note the size of T-Track and how many tables and what can still be accomplished, the sky is the limit. We're just getting started, That's aren't we? right, exactly. All right, so what else did you want to show me about the layout today? Well, um, let's go around there. Well, look at how big, folks, look how big this layout is. Going all the way from right to left. Just a huge layout. All right, we're coming around the other side. What are we looking at next? Some of the other features for this uh, at this layout is we have functional windmills, wind turbines. Functional, functional. turbines. So, so there is a, a meter right there. All right, we're going to zoom a little bit in on that if we can. And as as, as we turn the wheels, do you see the needle move? So you are generating actual power yeah, by turning. Generating power. All right. Can you generate enough power to run a locomotive? Uh, not at this point. We need more wind turbines. You know, we just saw the old cotton brute on this layout a few minutes ago. That's going to take a lot of power we, to push need, the cotton brute. We need more wind turbines. More turbines. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are we looking at next? Well, another form of. I'll see you later. Another form of power generation is called thermal solar. Thermal solar. Basically, it's just mirrors. It's constraining the sun. Right. And that heats the tower. So that's All right. thermal solar. So tell me, we've got a big flashlight somewhere to make the thermal. And we can heat this thing up. <laughs> now, I have gone it up to 135 degrees out, outside. Outside? Like, yeah. Wow. So this is basically a little home... So home we're not... Thermometer that we're not find. playing games with toys. We're yeah, actually we are, modeling we can, we the real thing. Power. Wow, that's cool. All right, what's next? As part of the, um, as part of the energy thing, we have a, a truck tipper. Okay. Okay, and the truck tippers will deliver wood chips, uh, garbage, well, garbage incinerators. So this is... Uh, go, go ahead, if, are you able to actuate it? Uh, we, get, we have an actuator uh, for this uh, model. Oh, look at that. I know a lot of model railroaders across NRAIL, they're going to want to do this immediately. We're going to, we're going to need to do a clinic on how to make servos and Arduinos and how work. How to control uh, your, your animation. The nice thing about this, this is a 3D printed model. You 3D printed that? Yeah, it's a 3D printed model. You know that's going to be a hot topic here coming in 2023. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, between 3D printing and animation that brings uh, youth into the hobby. Absolutely. Absolutely. The youth aren't satisfied with just buying something off the shelf. They want to make it themselves. Yep. And, you know, to be honest, that is part of the education initiative that we've been studying for some time called using model railroading as a platform to teach the next generation science, technology, yep. engineering, artistry, and math. Yeah. You know what that's called? Exactly. Steam, steam education, steam train, full steam ahead, right? Exactly. All right, what are we looking exactly. at next? No, as we go further down, we have a little T-Track module yes. that represents a hydroelectric plant. Hydroelectric? Hydroelectric. So basically, you put up a dam, raise your water level, enough head pressure to turn the turbine generator, and that's all this hydroelectric. All this focus on energy right now, I feel like I should be drinking an energy drink right now while watching this. This is cool. And All right. As we go further down, yep. uh, we have a typical intermodal yard. Right. Okay. And in that, that container uh, crane, it, it will move forward, backwards, up and down, and open and close. So it's also yeah, automated. You can that. I believe right. this, you actually displayed this at the Nashville convention. Is that That's right? That's correct. I, we did see that on video there, and it's nice to see it still living and thriving. Still, yep. And as we go further down, the USS Enterprise is in 
So we're in dry dock at this point. In dry dock, yes we are. Wow. But dry dock doesn't mean the aircraft slow down. We got a couple planes ready to go oh, and yeah. some choppers. Uh, they're on display. And the dry dock includes a submarine over there too, I see. Yep, yeah. yeah, we have a sub. This is another dry dock built by another member. Nate, one of our members is Dudley Forrester. Okay. He built that module. Wow. Uh, That's really well done. So what's next? And as we go further down, we have the container ship is in. Is in and I 3D printed those uh, container cranes. Wow. That's neat. How long? I know 3D printing takes a long process, like an overnight or over multiple nights. How long did it take it, to print these? It took about four hours to build uh, each. Four hours to make them or yeah. four hours to build the parts? To, to, uh, to build the parts. Okay. okay. And I and I glue them together, glue the parts together. So. That's so, so that's cool. That's uh, another things that bring kids into the hobby. Oh, absolutely. What's next? Okay, as we go down here, we have two drawbridges. Yes. And it represents the bridges going across the Charles River. The Charles by, River. By, uh, the, this is in Boston. By Boston. Um, and so I 3D printed the adapters and I glued a commercial cattle bridge onto the adapter. Oh, okay. And, and let me turn some lights on. Now, oh, look at the signal lights. Now, I, I also motorized it so we can have an operable bridge. Oh my goodness, look at this. All right, we better warn all the engineers, locomotives stop, Charles River is now open. Yeah. Well, that's why we have signal lights. Yes, the need says red. <laughs> Wow. And I love the slow speed that you've got there too. It's not snapping back and forth. Wow. The, the question is how, how slow can you turn your knob? <laughs> so that's how you did that. That's you were turning the knob the whole yeah. time. Wow. Faye, that is really great. Yeah. Did you write an article about that too? Yes, I did. It's in a news, it's in a in rail newsletter I wrote many years ago. And we will include the link down I below. Will give you the link on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's okay. next? And as we go further down, we have uh, we have functional solar panels. I see them. Okay. Uh, again, there's a there's a meter. Sure that enough. Shows us the output of those meters. Uh, and if you look at the there's a light in, above the door in that little shed. And, and a little shed, there's a light. The, uh, oh, okay. Tell me what's next. Uh, typical, uh, just another typical city. I and love again, the flag right there, that's again, really nice. And again, I use the Adreno to, to control all the lights. What's going on in this scene here? I see a police car, I see a fire. Well, you have a campfire going on there. Okay. You know, I guess... Um, so police are just security, we're having a little... Yeah. Festival. You know, you know you're in trouble when you have the chief of police and the uh, fire chief. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah. All right. What's next? Okay, so, so um, right here we have a, a more power. 3D printed nuclear power plant. You know, the whole world wants to know what's the sustainable energy. Well. And so, what we have here is a 3D printer model. Yes. And it took 10 hours to build the cooling tower. And it also took 10 hours to build the reactor dome. Oh my goodness. So that's a representation of a nuclear power plant. And did you write an article about that too? No, I have not. And rail article coming soon on how you can use a 3D printer to add Nuclear power to yeah, your T-Track layout. Up. That's awesome. It's a, so uh, this is just a typical uh, power generation. An yeah. entire themed run of power generation from north to south, east to west. Faye, this is fantastic. Thank you. You can almost. Faye, thank you so much.
Thank you very much. Good luck to you. Bye-bye.